So as I said, yeah, the really, really the advantage is, is if you do testing in your own infrastructure, you can't really do deterministic, uh, deterministic testing because, yeah, the phone service provider may be down or may discard your uh, message or do whatever you want or whatever they want, not whatever I want. So you can really test. Um, also, yeah, you can really also test parts of the messages which should be otherwise sanitized because maybe yeah, you're a good guy and you actually want to like find the bugs to fix them instead of just attacking them. So you also want to find the parts that are actually not attackable but would also cause a crash. So you cannot do that in, in a real environment. And it's faster, like over wireless LAN, there's no delay of the SMS, which could also be delayed by the provider. It's, yeah, I would say like 10 times, but maybe you can, it's, it's faster, but at least 10 times. And of course, usage fees. I think in Germany it's like 49 cents per message. So, yeah, 100 message or 1,000 messages, that's quite some, some amount of money. So after a big fuzzing session, you could like, instead of paying the money for the fuzzing, you could like buy like 10 devices or something. Yeah, yeah, and f like if you're just a student, there's like no way you want to pay that kind of money. So some the first the first box like in the no, even the no, in the small notification message, it's just either sendable over UDP or or SMS. There are already quite some number of bugs. So if you make the transaction ID like really long, MMS composer like one also uh, one five also dies, but that's the length for the version two, and it's just like oh whoops. Content location too, and yeah. Unfortunately, you cannot use it for code injection, also because the messages are normally very small. So you could maybe ins include a very small payload, but the bugs, I couldn't overwrite the return address, so yeah. But the fun thing is, the notification flutter tool now can prevent everybody from using email, SMS, and MMS while the wireless LAN is switched on because everything is in one application and as soon as you're connected to the wireless LAN, it just sends us one message and your client just crashes. So for maybe for MMS, that's not too bad because you can switch off your um, the wireless, but if you want to read email, yeah, maybe over GPS, but it's it's kind of fun that you can actually like uh, keep people from using a totally another service by while you while using or by abusing the MMS infra infrastructure on the device. It's, I thought that was like really funny. Then we have some more in the receive uh, in the actual MMS message that's transported to the device in the headers. There are multiple overflows. Yeah, they're kind of interesting, but. The problem is the, the infrastructure and the filtering. So yeah, I didn't look too deep into that. So um, so in the body content, uh, there. So there are like more over just plain buffer overflows and a lot of them. But yeah, you cannot uh, exploit most of the stuff most of the stuff in the real world because the uh, the message would never be accepted by the senders um, or by the attackers MMS server. So yeah, you can, you in, in the real world you cannot, or maybe you can, let's, let's, let's see later, can use it for, for attacks. Yeah. So because if you like set up your own MMS server, you cannot, you, you don't have to actually submit a message, so you can just like build your build your bad MMS message with like all the nice overflows in there and just deliver it to the, to some client. So what you actually need to do, you just need to send this notification message and say, hey, here's a new message, try and get it. But in like I did most of my testing in the US and for some reason, um, even if I, I was told the web gateway could go to other um, IPs and just talk to them and get um, MMS messages from there. I wasn't really able to do it, but actually it wasn't that much of, of, uh, of a focus for me, so I didn't do the testing very very well, so yeah, maybe you guys should like test like all the German phone providers 
since I released the source, you have have something to do and see if you can actually bring them to, or yeah, if if it's possible to to run your own MMS server and make I don't know T-Mobile E plus whatever like the web gateway to actually get, go to your MMS server, and then you can use like basically all the of the attacks I found. But there is SIML, it's a cool um, HTML for MMS, totally, I don't know, kind of useless. It looks like, it really looks like uh, HTTP, uh, HTML, sorry, or, but it's basically just some XML based language. Again, like everybody needs XML, so also the MMS guys need, need XML. But it basically says, okay, display the picture here, display the text here, wait five seconds, switch to the next picture, something like that. And as I said before, the message body is not, um, it's not sanitized or any, any kind of validation is happening. So it's really the perfect attack worker if we could only find something there. So that's actually the, an SIML file, very simple. And yeah, guess what, why I highlighted these two parameters. Because, yeah, the, the parser is actually vulnerable. You can actually just stuff whatever you want into the tags. And, yeah, <laughs> the parser just dumps it onto the stack for you. Uh, really, really simple. Like, nobody ever implemented, uh, like, parsing uh, uh, fields in HTML, like ID or whatever, <laughs> source equals something in double quotes. That's, like, really, really hard to implement. So they have like two part, like two two parts of the message at least. Like I stopped, I stopped fuzzing after I found these two. Probably it's like the same parser for fields, but it's it's really it's really that damn stupid. So so we now have something that you can use for an attack. Um, but yeah, to actually attack something, you actually need your your own MMS user agent. So something that um, actually like sends a message to. Your infrastructure, your provider, service provider's infrastructure, and yeah. So it's it's it was actually really really simple since I already had the message generator from the fuzzer, but it's based on MMSlib um, or like on a much improved version of it. And the WAP client is yeah, it's basically just yeah a, a stupid WAP client like ten lines of Java. Yeah, sorry for all you guys. If you want to try it, you have to install Java. But I hate it, but I was really too lazy to do it and see if it was just like 10 lines in Java. And then you just use your mobile phone and dial up your GPRS, get the MMS, get the, all the values for the, the IPs and stuff for the MMS relay from, from the how-to section of your, of your mobile phone provider. And yeah, unfortunately, you really have to use GPRS because they block their infrastructure, um, um, they block access to the infrastructure from the internet, or just have it on a private IP range. So you have to invest some money into, into GPRS. So yeah, the first mobile phone remote code, uh, uh, code execution exploit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, in August it was the first one, so everybody was like crazy, woo! Yeah, and in, in in comparison with other attacks against mobile phone, it's real, really code injection execution. It's not a Trojan or anything the user has to execute. You basically have to open or view the message in order to trigger it. So maybe you need some social engineering in your subject line, maybe, or you just want like a new cell phone from your provider, or I don't know. Yeah, some some clients I guess um, open the new message by itself. I, it happened like 10 times on my device. Maybe it's like a stupid bug or I don't know. But yeah, if it auto automatically opens um, a message, then you basically have uh, not even, a, you, you have like a really remote exploit without any user interaction. But yeah, you still have the, the minor complications um, that apply if, uh, for Windows C exploitation the return address guessing, but yeah, it works, and we'll show you why, yeah. So yeah, open the message, yeah. Yeah, I really did it in in March, in March this year, so it's 
kind of old already, but yeah. So yeah, since yeah, I didn't I didn't release the, the exploit code at DevCon, so I had this stuff for like all for the like five people I knew who could like write Windows CE shell code because I guess like oh maybe they want to do it or maybe they want to tell me I I fucked up. So yeah, that's kind of useless. But yeah, the slot. The slot part is really interesting because you actually have 32 slots, but of course some slots will be used by system processes and maybe you start your application right in the beginning. And yeah, the, my, my statistic basically showed me is these five, uh, four slots. Actually there's a uh, five one which I did find after some more testing, but you can pretty, be pretty sure that if you use one of these slots for your return address, you will get it. So maybe you just like send four messages and if so maybe the, 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 your victim is like stupid enough to open all of them because oh, maybe oh, it didn't, it just crashed. Oh, maybe the other one works. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So yeah, the screenshots, is, yeah. I have a very bad digital, had a very bad digital camera at that point, but yeah, since I couldn't, I couldn't do a re real nice demo because yeah, you're getting a, a nice, a nice video camera for for your PDA is not that, not that easy, and it's a hell a hell of a mess for uh, to set it up. So, just, just a picture. So, and of course, I told Microsoft and ArcSoft about that before even before DevCon, and they oh yeah, thank you, and uh, yeah, we're going to fix it super fast and. Oh yeah, and then after two weeks, yeah, we have this patch, but all our OEMs need to test it. So maybe I don't know. Maybe we release it whenever. And now nothing, nothing happened. There is no updates. I asked other people who always also work with pocket PC devices and cell phones, and they, oh yeah, we didn't see anything. Nothing happened. So yeah, so. Even if they fix it, I would have released it. So, but now they really have a reason to fix it. And the URL will be will be live right after the talk. You can click on the file, but yeah, nothing. You cannot download it yet. It really has like everything. Like I have my the the WAP client, the the ten lines of Java, and all the MMS generators, some prepared um, shell code, and yeah, and and a nice how to about how to do it. So, of course, since I actually did that for, for getting my master's degree, my professors kind of said like, yeah, maybe we should think about defense, not only <laughs> about the attacks. That looks way better in your, in your thesis. <laughs> it was kind of that, so yeah. What you basically can do, you can just like for, for the notification flooding, you could go and just have a small packet filter on your phone um, then for the MMS message, you may want to run like an IDS on the phone uh, on the message, uh, phone service provider side, so like even filter messages out before they even reach your network. Um, yeah, of course, like an IDS antivirus on your phone. Yeah, and then if you have if you manage to run your own rogue um, MMS um, MMS um, not, uh, M MMS server on. You, yeah, you maybe think, oh, I guess they filter notifications because uh, they should be the only one to, s to send them out. So, but of course, no, nobody filters anything there. Why? So, yeah. But that's actually what they should do. They should filter binary MMS, especially the notification stuff, install like IDSs, virus scanners on the network. And yeah, for the users, just install the firmware updates when they really, when they finally make them available. So yeah, we're almost done. So the conclusions, since it was basically not, okay, I want to attack your mobile phone, it was basically, okay, what do we need to do in order to do penetration testing for a mobile device? And especially a phone, because you have all the infrastructure, and that was kind of a challenge, and a nice, a nice thing we found is like this really the, the attack, for the two vector attack against one application, Wi-Fi, SMS, MMS against one application. That was kind of fun. Yeah, we found like, yeah, 10, 10 bugs, 
more is 